receive the goal. Nothing to beat a win at Wembley. Black, who's going to go for it? Black for the one point to win the grand final. He's done it. Hello, welcome to another live post match live stream of Talking Facts of Life. Uh, with myself, my case, and as always, uh, to my left, or to your right, as you can see, uh, my amigo, aficionado, producer, and friend, and fan, is Rick Farrell. How are you doing, Rick? Uh, I'm knackered, man. <laughs> ah, we are, I think we're all knackered after that game. Uh, but yes, uh, we joined another that live stream, and um, we are proud to be. Uh, Sponsored by Eclipse Energy. Eclipse Energy! <laughs> oh, that's out of paper. And delivery! Delivery! <laughs> um, yes, uh, get involved. Uh, get involved, get your comments in for another Fax win. Seven on the trot. Um, seven and counting. Hopefully, we'll make it eight uh, this time next week. Um, we will discuss the graphic game uh, in due course, but let's plug some here and now. Uh, Get straight into talking about that Sheffield game, shall we? So, while we're waiting for some comments to come in, please let us know. Say hello. Um, say hello. Say, say who, who, your, who your game stars, men of the, men of the match, um, moment of the match, all that sort of jazz. Let us know. Um, and we'll get we'll we'll get to you when we get a few more comments on there. Um, we'll give our thoughts first and foremost, and I think there's only one place to start in the the man himself, Adam Tangata. Who uh, ah. are Tangata indeed? Um, hat trick. He looked dangerous every time he got the ball. I think arguably one of his best performances in life shirt. Full stop. Let alone this uh, this spell. Um, He's showing. Re- he, he had a home comforts playing at, at Bellevue, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, th- I thought it was outstanding. Obviously, you had a different vantage point to to ourselves behind the sticks. What what do you think any differently? What what do you reckon? Oh no, I totally agree, mate. You know his carries were strong. He looked bang up for it. But they all did. To be fair, I think as forwards, yeah. his pack really stood up well today on uh, on a really good pitch. It has to be said, it's nice to play on a mm. purpose rugby field for a change, but. The less said about the rest of the ground, the better, you know. <laughs> Super League quality ground, isn't it? Apparently so, but um, yeah, I'm just delighted to get the win. And I think I put on my on my Twitter comments and all that. It was a real blood and thunder type contest. And I think Adam mm. Tangata epitomised everything that we did well today. So, yeah. Yeah, he, he needed that little bit of quality to, to break down a stubborn Sheffield side. They raised their game and, and I think it's only Toulouse that have scored more points against us in the game this, this year. Uh, and again, it's one of those, where, where I've said before, like we need to focus on our attack and I, think, I still think we need to, but maybe our defence, not necessarily goal line defence, but like in, in midfield and that sort of thing, to stop them making yards, to, to get them in that... Um, to get him in those opportunities and he's looking at. Um, I was Tangata was with Man of the Match, a hat trick of tries. Got to mention Bobby Fairbank as well, chipping in with two. I think he's a bit disappointed that uh, Tangata got <laughs> Tangata got three. Uh, but typical industrious performance from, from Fairbank. You need, need those old heads uh, to, to guide some of the youngsters around around the pitch. I thought I thought it was brilliant. Um, I thought Woodburn Hall was solid at the back end. That try saving tackle for yeah, for Miller I thought Miller was away and the way that he came over and covered fair enough he didn't necessarily finish the tackle himself but he stopped the momentum I thought it was brilliant and then obviously it's, it's, it's frustrating sometimes because like we can see Woodburn all making his runs around the back and for some whatever reason they keep choosing the the, the centre or the, the second row to come out, out the front and Woodburn all from, from my eyes has misses several chances of walk-ins but you got it's you've got to give the guys trust on the field. See what what's happening there. Um, have you got anyone who you want to champion before we get into? Well, I thought McComb, uh, oh, outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously Barber was back today, so he had a chance maybe to go and play him in the centre again. But he's he's put his faith into Zach, and he, he just seems to be getting better every every single time. You know, playing against his former club as well, there could have been a bit of niggle there. He could have let himself sort I of get away from the <laughs> from the pit. Well, we've spoke about. Um, was it Joel Farrell lost yeah. here and now oh, he totally lost his head? But now I thought he was outstanding. Uh, Conor McGrath as well mm, um, yeah, showed yeah. up really well, bringing it out from the back. Salty, as reliable as ever. A couple of mistakes which we could have done without, but I think at that point in the game, it were, the nerves were sort of getting to people, weren't they? Because yeah. it were, 
we've got to give credit to Sheffield. I thought they were massively improved on the last time we played. Definitely, them. yeah, yeah. It was just it was a great game of rugby league from two completely committed sides that just went at each other for the full eighty. And luckily, we just seemed to have a bit more stamina and a bit more smarts between the years to get yeah. over the line in the end. But on as we keep saying, you know, they're going to give us a heart attack eventually. Why does it have to be <laughs> like this every week? But we just always seem to have that little bit of quality to get over the line at the right time and, and it showed again today yeah good good teams find a way to win when not everything's going for you i wouldn't i'd slightly disagree with saying it was a great game but i don't think it was for any neutral watch i don't think it had been a great one i think it was a bit one for the purists but just intense really and like as i say it was on a knife edge sometimes and in it just typical Halifax this year with shaping up for a drop goal a poor pass leads to harris going off off the cuff and Scoring, scoring six points rather than the one, um, but yeah, it's it's one, it's one again. We're gonna sound like broken records. Here. It's probably one of those games where in times gone by, we'd have probably lost the game because we didn't. As they say, smarts. We had to do it. Um, fair enough. Scott Griggs has been slightly quieter than usual these last few weeks, but he's still got those smarts to 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 organise a team and put put us in places and and that sort of thing. Maybe he's been a victim of his own success because he played so well in the first like two, three games he came back. He's not hit those heights yet, but he's not he's not playing badly by any stretch of the imagination. But Liam Harris is just he's he's making a knack of clutch plays when when someone needs to step up to the occasion bit of off the cuff action he comes to the fore there and um maybe he needs to do it early on maybe not i don't know but hopefully they're saving something big for the bradford game next week it looks every bit the super league player that we signed as well doesn't yeah, it you know? yeah. so um i hope we can keep hold of him for next year i know obviously he only signed a one-year deal and grits has spoken the week about the the problems that we're having not knowing the funding that they're going to get and that sort of thing but i think if you're going to nail a member of that squad down who's not on a two-year deal already liam harris has got to be it Yep, well, we'll we'll address the elephant in the room as well. Um, the uh, announced straight after the game that Gadwin Springer has left the club, gone to gone to Fev. Um, it frees up a big chunk of salary cap money, so um, maybe we could use some of that to, to tie Liam Harris down, maybe for, right. for for next year. We don't we don't know, but. Um, it's fair to say that Springer did blow very hot and cold. He had some games where he was, he was dominant, others that he wasn't so dominant. And I think we've said time and time again, we can only afford to have players who are playing well week in, week out, have that consistency there. Yeah. Uh, and he's obviously seen an opportunity to, to go to Federson or Federson are coming through him or whatever. It seems... It seems quite cut and dry what's happened. Uh, you don't have to be a rugby league expert to, to, to kind of work out what, what's happened there. Um, and he's got he's gone to a, a, a promotion rival. Whether he does the job for him remains to be seen, but I'm I'm happy with where we're at in terms of the forwards that we've got there. I don't think he's that big a loss. He is a big loss because he's a character. When he plays well, he's devastating, but we didn't see that often enough. Kind of like a QLT kind of player. Yeah, possibly. absolutely. Like, like a, a, Q, a, a prop version of QLT, really. When he's good, he's very good, but when he's bad, he's, 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 he's irrelevant, really. He showed glimpses of how destructive he could be with ball and hand going at the line, and he got a good offload away, I think, in the Featherstone game to set Tangara yeah. up for a try. and He had glimpses, but... He's very, very idle in defence. And the way that this team's built and the way that this team fights for yeah. each other, you need everyone to be pulling away. And I don't think you were doing that. And, can, uh, can we afford to carry someone who just shows glimpses, really? That's as, it. As a prop forward. Fair enough. You've got half-backs that drift in and out of the game sometimes. And yeah. Liam Harris, you could argue that he only shows glimpses of, of his potential mm. in something. But it wins your games. Yeah. If you're a middle player and you only saw glimpses where you're good for five minutes and then rubbish for the next five minutes, so it's, it's, it's costly, isn't it? The thing about, as you say, so to speak, carrying a forward is all it takes is a moment to relapse in defence and the, the straight through the middle and over, and they're the kind of things that can decide games. So I totally agree on that. It depends what, what you see, what you want out of your forwards. We've got lots of different types of props, haven't we, really? And... I wish him well, but it just yeah. didn't work out. You know, it's it's not the first time no. that we've signed someone with big hopes and it's not worked out. Oh, so. no. And, and and again, like we say time and time again, we don't know what's, what happens in training behind closed doors on closed training pictures. We don't know. And we've got to trust Gr Grix with this because th uh, there's plenty of guys. We've got competition for places. Will Calcott didn't play this week. We believe due to COVID yeah. regulations or whatever. 
he's been absolutely fantastic this year. He's 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 come from a boy to a man. I think Will Calcott this season, and he's and there's other players. We've still got Sean Jones to come back. We've got loads of other people who play in Springer's position who are more consistently good. You look at the Morrises and the Murrays and the Tangatas of this world. They they consistently play really well and. Yeah, you got someone like Connor Davis as well that could come back in and play yeah. that position where he offers something completely different. He's not a big marauding forward like you'd expect to see from Springer, but one thing he has is a hundred and ten percent effort. And to be honest, I don't think we got that from Springer. No. I see some of the comments that are coming in. Keep keep your comments coming in, guys. If there's any, if you disagree with us or whatever, yeah, let us know. Let, let, let us know. If you if you if you think we're talking rubbish, let let us know. Tell us where we need to know. I know I know I talk rubbish and I know Rick talks rubbish, but we we need vindication from yourself to prove that we talk rubbish. Um, I use the word underwhelming when I was speaking to me. <laughs> Perfect. on the way on the way back um is a friends international he's got plenty of super league experience and you look at the size and the stature of the man he should be knocking down let alone forget trees he should be knocking down forests um the the, the way the, the way he is and the, the the brutal fact is he hasn't and if he has he's only knocked down trees in glimpses like like you like you said and I don't particularly like those sort of players who who choose the moments to, to do that, especially if they're a middle player. Yeah. You've got to be consistently good. And as I say, we've got the likes of Morris and Murray and Tangata. Like, like you say, Connor Davis, it's, he's a lot smaller in stature, but he puts he, he bangs everyone with that weight consistently. Yeah. So um, and I say it's a shame because I say he's a character. He loves playing for Halifax um, by, by all accounts, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Some, some players can't work with certain coaches. Some coaches yeah. don't want certain type of players, and we've got to trust that process. It's one of those as well. The trans we spoke quite a lot, haven't we, about the transition from part um, full time to part time yeah, rugby. Yeah. Might not have adjusted to that. Maybe that's why we didn't see the best of him. But I think for the money that he was on, from what we've been told, he was quite a high earner that it could free up and we could maybe spend in many other areas of the mm -hmm. squad for the sake of one man. I don't think you can keep that one man in. And if he's not going to get a game, it's better that he does go somewhere else and they take the financial burden away from us rather than just yeah. have him sitting on the sidelines collecting a wage for not much output so yeah you, you never want to see anyone leave no but I, I think it's because of the expectations that we had when he came in yeah, that, yeah. you know but like like i say, we'll we'll get to the comments in a minute but a lot of people are saying that they thought he were good so it's everyone sees a different game don't of course they? they do yeah it's all it's all subjective uh let's get into some of these these comments while we're here um so um Hello, Linda. Linda Kitson. Hey, Linda. Thank you very much for joining us always. And Chris Kirch as well. Um, who are Tangata? Yeah, he's, he says he was absolutely fantastic today. Um, Jane Fairbank thought that Springer was good, as did Linda herself. Again, it's it, there's no doubting he's a good player. You, you you don't you don't get to be an international player or super league player if you're a bad player. Is in in our opinion I'd, I'd, I'd say but also most importantly Simon Griggs is he, he didn't show that enough and consistently enough he only showed glimpses that's probably the word the podcast that is glimpses yeah. glimpses really um, and his new club Featherstone um, overcame Bradford just at the uh, the one yard in goal uh, Odsall, <laughs> Odsall Stadium Um but yeah what do, what do you reckon I'll, I'll, I'll pose a question to him like segue into it Obviously, we're we're playing Bradford next week. Massive uh, derby game. Uh, we've had a really tough game against Sheffield, but come out with the win. Bradford have obviously had a real roller coaster ride against Featherston this week. Um, do you think that works in our favour because they've had such such a bad and lost in in uh, late circumstances, or do you think we might get a backlash next week? Well, it's it's deflating, isn't it, to go into training yeah. after you've been? I think they were twenty points to twelve up at half time yeah, or whatever, yeah. and they. He seemed to be edging it, and obviously Fev have turned it on, but I think the main thing that's come out of our game, as opposed to there, I spoke to Simon at full time, he said, by the looks of things, we've got no injuries, so that's fantastic. Yeah. I think Bradford, it's been well documented that they've lost Lily and Bruff, their mm -hmm. two halfbacks, two long-term injuries, so they'll be out for us regardless. They've brought Joe Keyes in on a short-term deal, yeah. and it looks like he's failed the HIA today, which means that oh, really? the protocol wow. will mean that he probably won't play, so... It could be a very costly week for Bradford. They could come to the share next week with no halfbacks by yeah. the looks of things. Yeah. So 
Yeah, in terms of your question, I, I think it it will do both sides good because it's a big yeah, derby anyway. Of course it is. But I think our lads will bounce into training where I, I think that John Key will have to pick his side up off the canvas, yeah. so to speak, and and big them up. But so. again, it's if if there's one coach that you'd yeah. want for a team, who uh, it's on, Simon on, Griggs. On, on, <laughs> yes, very true. Um, but in, in Bradford's point of view, if you'd one coach where against the odds putting a bad team together to, to win a, a big kind of one-off game because it is pra- it's near enough like a, a, a cup final, near enough um, on, on Sunday because we, we, we've taken over third place because of our win percentage. <laughs> uh, Bradford have got a game in hand and that, but uh, our points difference is so much better than theirs. If we win on Sunday we could potentially have one foot in third place. And that is massive in terms of, of this year. Obviously, it's the prize money for finishing as high up in the table as possible. But well, also that's the thing. Like I said, we don't know exactly if it's going to be done on on placing the table no. this year. But no, but even so, re- regardless of that, it's home advantage in the playoffs um, in, 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 and how they work. And that would be absolutely brilliant for us. Um, but yeah, it's, regardless, Halifax Bradford don't need any build-up or anything, but hopefully we need to start ramping up now. It's the first game of this year without any restrictions at all. It's on Yorkshire Day. Hopefully it's weather like today, sun beating down. Get everyone down there. Hopefully it'll be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, now. and keep, keep your eyes peeled tomorrow. There's some really exciting things uh, for the Bradford game coming out this week and obviously uh, you'll have seen the clubs putting on a lot of entertainment but there's some really good promos starting tomorrow so keep your eyes peeled on the uh, club's pages for that. Ooh, a bit of an exclusive there, Ricardo. Oh, hey. <laughs> right, let's get back into these comments as well. Peter Wood, thanks for joining yeah, us again, Pete. Pete. Um, brilliant as always. Uh, Grix obviously has standards, especially defensively. He's been single-minded and brave as regards to team selection, and so far it's come off. The announcement did mention they're on the lookout for a replacement. Yeah, and as I say, if you lose one, you'd hope to bring one in. Maybe we, we could bring two in because spring is going to be on a fair whack. Um, f- for that, and hopefully we, we, we do strengthen in that in, in that area. If we were going to strengthen, would you want? Obviously, we, we, we're going to be a prop shot. Would you prefer us to to just go for a really really good prop, which takes a majority of Springer's wage that's come off the cap, or would you prefer to possibly have an up and coming prop, maybe, and then spend money elsewhere, like an outside back? For to instance? be honest with you, no matter who it is, I just want him to come in and be here for the rest of the season. None yeah. of this dipping for a week and then go back to Huddersfield or Wigan or wherever, and then come back and go back. We don't want any of that. We want no. stability now. So yeah, yeah, I, th- I think. If you're going to get rid of one sort of Super League proven prop like Springer, you want to bring in someone that's an equally as as sort of recognisable name and level of performance. I think Grixie sort of alluded to that in the um, article that he did about Springer that we would be getting someone that would sort of turn some heads. So Yeah, it looks like a lot of stuff's been done um, in the background. Obviously, if after the White Haven game, it said that clubs were alerted to Springer's availability. Maybe we've been doing cloak and dagger uh, inquiries to, to other teams for, for, for their players. Um, yeah, may, maybe. Uh, Lyndon Grady, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Lyndon, said, bring back big Brendan Hill. Well, <laughs> he certainly was, was a player and a I character. I bet his there. knees might be. <laughs> <a little> bit, <laughs> so. but, but the one thing I like about it is, we, like I said earlier, we haven't just sat back on our laurels and thought, oh, we'll wait wait it out till the end of the season and then part ways. He's been proactive and he's gone out and he's made a decision. Yeah. Like Peter said, he's he's been brave and single minded in his decision. And that fantastic article that he did with friend of the show, Matt Shaw. Yeah. Where he, he said that he's read a book which was uh, was it the subtle art of not giving a f- Yeah. <laughs> flip. <Fudge. laughs> flip. Um he's really proven himself that not only is he a good technical coach, but that he's got the man management skills to to get someone out of the group who he feels would be to the detriment of the overall group and yeah. go on the lookout for the right person. Obviously, during COVID, it might not have been that easy to sort of get to know these guys and see what they're all no. about and stuff. So, for the, for the outside looking, obviously, you know him quite well in terms of the work that you do. For the outside looking in, he seems like a player's coach because obviously he's very recently retired, but also he's very because he's very single minded. <laughs> he won't mind pissing off some players by making the decisions yeah. and that sort of thing and for, for the outside looking in it's like blimey like, I'll, 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 again like a broken record I'll go back to the Kevin Leroy decision to drop him against Toulouse yeah. 
I don't think Kevin Laura did anything wrong to, to, to warrant being dropped in that, but obviously he was. He seemed very, very annoyed into, uh, on his commentary for, 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 being, uh, for being dropped, uh, for that, which, is, which is good to see, really. It shows he wants to play. Absolutely. It's brilliant. Um, but look, at, look how well he's played since then. He's, 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 he's committed to making the tough decisions, not necessarily for short-term game, but maybe long-term. Yeah. And with Springer... That could be work out in both favours. It could be short term. It's short term because you're getting someone who he don't see in his plans. Get rid of him off the books, and then maybe bring in someone, maybe a couple of younger players to, to yeah. bring through and that sort of thing there. And like you said, that sort of runs with you saying he's a player's coach because as well he's given Springer a chance to go out there and get another deal for next yeah. year or whatever. You know, maybe if he signs with Fev or whatever, he's rather than again letting it fester for ages and maybe kicking the decision down the road because we've got other things to think about. He's been proactive. He's been aggressive with what he's doing, and he's gone out there and made a decision and. Long may it continue because, like he's, like uh, Peter said, they've come off so far. So yeah, let, let's just stop. Like I say, let's just stop that we get someone in, we can stick with them. They fit into our squad, and we'll get it done quickly, and then give them a chance to settle in. And because we seem to be a, re- a club going places, and it's a club that 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 people want to go to because of the way that we've recruited, we've recruited Super League standard players because of the reputation that we have as a club. We've mentioned before in previous podcasts um, that players come and stay and, and yeah. stay in the local area and stuff. We've obviously got really good relationships with Uddersfield. Um, Uddersfield, like James Fairbank has said in the comments, praising what we've done with Sam Hewitt. It'd be yeah. great to get him back, but uh, I think he's too, he's too good for, for He deserves to be playing Super League, but if not, I'd love to have him back. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. There's loads of you watching. Who do you reckon? Who, who, who would yeah, you want to see? Give us some names. Who, who's who out there see? in the market at the minute that you think could be a good fit for facts? Who, who, who do you reckon? And again, like the question that I posed to Rick there, would you want to use the uh, the, the spring of money that, that, that we've got off the cap to sign a, a quite high-profile replacement or a, an other position or a couple of younger, perhaps cheaper players to, to, to bed into the side kind of thing? What, what, what do you, you call, reckon? What do you call the, the young lad at Wigan that... Um that came through that great Siddle team. He's sort of on the fringes of their pack. Oof, I don't know. The only one I know is, is Morgan Smith. He's obviously probably great to get Morgan Smith. He's from Halifax. Well, so. it, just, <laughs> Morgan Smith is an Amir Borough in the same Halifax team. Blimey. <laughs> That'd be destructive. And better to keep the uh, the disciplinary c- committee uh, uh, busy as well. Um, so, uh, straight off the bat, Stephen Boyer said, Mitch Clark from Wigan. Um, yeah, he's been... He's well, so, can I just say, like, didn't he come and play like a game for us on Joel Reg? A bit did. like Springer. Yep. Mm, he did. Yeah. And also he's had his he had his backside on a twin by Dan Fleming yeah, at, at, at the bash and that. Um yeah, and he may, may be a bit old. Um maybe old, I don't know. Um James Hamer. Uh, thanks for joining us, okay. James. Um, so if we have if we have money spared now, what about trying to see if we can sign Borough from Wigan permanently for next year? The lad's class will only get better. Uh, unfortunately, I think Wigan see him very much in their plans going forward. The only reason that we've got him in on loan is because the reserve grade isn't working in Super League this year and, he wanted, um, and they wanted Amir to, to play regular rugby and they see him as their prop for next year. It depends how long Thomas Lulawai is going to go again, but Amir Borough, when he played against Huddersfield the other week, I've, I've, I've read from Wigan fans that they, he really, really impressed them. The, but the way he, he is played. out of contract, so there is a chance. He's out of contract. At, ah, at the end of this season. Right. So if there is a chance, if we did come to him with a solid offer now and said, look, they yeah. We could sort of play on it, you know. Like you're saying, maybe they do see him in the plans. But if we go to him and be like, "Look, they, hey, they haven't offered you a deal. What does what does that mean?" Yeah. Oh, getting his head a bit. Ooh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Very interesting. Because at the end of the day, lads just want to play rugby, r- r- regular rugby. That's it. That's Close awesome. to home, hometown yeah. club, and everything. I think again, this is proven. Even though that it hadn't worked out with Springer, that Grixie's first year of signings have been a success. Unlike Marshes, where. You know, we sort of fell across the squad from the yeah. previous era and, and that sort of thing. So Yeah. Um Jane Fairbank has made has made a couple of really good points there. First of all, Burr is superb. He definitely yeah. is. He's been one of the players they've seen so far. And also sometimes big names don't play well, thinking of York. Yeah. 
Um, a bit of a segue to last week in 1895 Cup Final. I thought York played tremendously well. I thought they had a really good go and they were unlucky to lose, really, but um, Fev, Fev did the job there. Um, but yeah, York have been, I'll use the word again, underwhelming. With they, They've gone for the tactic of signing big Super League names and it's not come off for them there, really. Um, there was one comment just above about why, Fev, why, why is Fev taking one of our players? There we go. Lyndon, Lyndon Grady. Our Fev's props not good enough to be taking one of our players. Uh, Fev have got a lot of issues with COVID and, and injuries at the moment as well, so um, they need to bolster their squad. But also, it <laughs> could be a little bit of a coup for them to take a, take a prop off a championship rival. Who knows? But again, um, Anthony Hildred has come from a left field. Sam Barlow. Um, actually, well, well, let's uh, just bring back Carl Harrison while we're yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bring back Neil Cherry home. I'd love to see Neil Cherry home back in the life, actually. Uh, but yeah, um, that ship is well and truly sailed, in my opinion. Um, for, for, for Halifax, he was a very good player for us. He, he's had he's had his time, um, but yeah, let let let's be that that is that is looking fat so far back. You'd strain your neck for that. <laughs> one, isn't it, to, to be honest, I'll I tell you one thing though. If if it does turn out that Wigan do value Borough and they and they keep him and, and offer him a new deal, or whatever, I think we're in safe hands with our replacement hooker of Curtis Davis, yeah. who again had another very solid performance after a man of the match performance last week. Obviously, we didn't do a stream because I was dying of the plague and. And all that sort of stuff, <laughs> but he had a really solid game. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Not know. not having as much minutes I'd like to see him, but again, he's be, he's he's not played rugby for the best for part a long of the year. Time, yeah. He's been doing slowly, and Brandon Moore will gladly do just, more minutes. And his stuff. distribution is just outstanding. Yeah, you know? definitely. And he's he's just he's just a unit. He's just an absolute unit. He's freak. Both of our all three hookers are freakishly strong. Yeah. Um, Robin Miles, w- uh, thanks for joining us, Robin. Uh, brilliant, brilliant comment there. Morgan Gannon on on loan from Leeds. Uh, his local lad, son of Jim Gannon, Halifax legend. Uh, played for the first time a few times. He's, he's somehow only 17 years old. He looks an absolute monster. Real talent would benefit both parties. Fantastic. See, yep. That's the sort of exactly the sort of thing that we're looking for. Grixie will know him as well because he came through the system at Siddle, I yep. believe. And again, make use of the fact that Super League don't have either reserve grade or academy running at the moment. We can offer them full, uh, well, regular rugby playing a man, man man sport because Morgan Ganami only means 17. He's only been played super, uh, uh, junior rugby and that sort of thing. Yeah. He's shown up incredibly well when he's played for what's, Leeds. What what's seen. Leeds' situation like with sort of injuries in the forward pack? I know they've just signed that uh, old lad again for another couple of years. I don't yeah. know what are they like for props at the minute. Yeah, are, are they strong enough at the minute to allow someone like that to go out? I think they're well covered, to be honest, but they, they are spending some brass as well. So they've just signed Aiden Caesar. They've signed James Bentley from Saints for next yeah. year as well. Uh, they are making some serious waves <laughs> there, but that could mean they need to get money off the cap somehow. They're losing some because Rob Lewis is going back to, to Australia uh, and they'll, they'll probably reshuffle the pack as well. But again, um, uh, that, that's a really good point there, Robin. Again, we want to see local lads play for the local team and it uh, seemed uh, a, a, a Gannon, another Gannon in an Halifax shirt would be a sight to be old, let alone the sign that he's, he's, he's 17 and about six foot five and 19 stone or something daft. He, he would be brilliant. And again, very much like Amir Burra, he, he needs to play a man's get a regular men's rugby to develop because coming in for a few games and, and staying off the bench is not going to help him whatsoever. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a brilliant shout, that. Um, Lyndon Grady, with a big question. Who is available and good enough to join our squad? Yeah, that's the million-dollar exactly question. That's exactly what we're discussing. Yeah, yeah, this is what you need to tell us, Lyndon. Come on. Um, Jane thinks that Gannon won stay at Leeds is too good. Obviously, yeah, I don't think we're going to sign him permanently, but if we can get him on loan and stuff and offer him that gateway to, to regular men's rugby, then that'd is be it, brilliant. Is it one of those? Do we necessarily have to be looking up, or is there someone from a championship team lower down, a star player in, in their team that we could probably poach if they're yeah. sort of going to start thinking about cutting their budget if they're looking lower down? So. Possibly, yeah. A- again... As, as we've seen in Super League, I've mentioned how Caesar going. They, it's it's the the merry-go-round has started, folks, and 
we, you mentioned the word proactive in terms of Grix getting getting rid of Springer and that. We need to be proactive. Now, I'm sure Crowdy, being director of rugby, is, is getting his tentacles out far and wide to, 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 to chat to these players. And he's got a really good track record of doing it in, in, in that respect. Um, then no doubt there'll be some discussions going on, not least for who we, we want to keep. We mentioned Liam Harris before. I, I would not be surprised if we are pecking his head saying come on stay come on stay yeah. give us one more year come on stay we've got a good thing going we'll build a team round that's kind of it thing. it looks to be really enjoying his rugby at facts as well yeah. and he's just having all these telling contributions every week why would he not want to be the star in a team on the up rather than exactly. going, going to Wakefield or something like that and then getting stuck or oh, you'll you might play one week when he's injured. A bit like, um, I think, ben, didn't Ben Reynolds go over there and yes. sort of struggle to get yes. a, a starting game every week? And yeah. Like you say, people want to, players want to play at the end of the day. Not And yeah, you might get more money at a Super League club on the fringes or whatever, but you never know. I, I think he'd, he'd like to stay. I'm not going to speak for the lad, but I think... No. He certainly looks to be enjoying himself, exactly. and that's that's all you want to see from a life wax player. Playing the way he's doing, enjoying it, and, and long may that continue. Yeah, I've got that in. <laughs> that's my little saying from now on. Uh, Pete Wood again. I think we should be looking at a couple of players. Springer, Borough, Hewitt, Brearley have left. I think there'll be a lot of players who would love to play for Fax and Gricks were a side on the up. Spot yeah, on. when you mention Wakefield and stuff, when you've got players who are on, on the crossroads and not necessarily playing that regularly and that, do the obviously Super League is a big carrot in terms of the full-time deal and the money that comes with it but do you want to be part like Tangata for, let's use Tangata for it as an example he left Halifax we're a team on the up con, con, winning more games than we're losing the feel good factor that comes into it playing these important yeah, yeah, games yeah, exactly yeah exactly um <laughs> Do you want to be doing a swap that for a, a, a mediocre Super League team who've got no chance of winning it, no chance really of winning a cup and that barely treading water, if not barely surviving in Super League? Would you, would you want to swap that? It's and again, it's he's gone and had a go. He's played all right, but then he's back Halifax, and again, he's loving it, like we've seen there. And and that's those are the sort of players that we need to target are the ones where. They would want to play rugby, play in a winning team in a feel good environment rather than treading water up in Super League. And I think that's what we should should play on there, really. Um, Jane Fairbank is going a little bit more long distance. Is there anyone in Australia that wants to come and play in England, like when Tangata came? Possibly. Unfortunately, we're, we're in COVID times, and as you may have heard, there's Australians that aren't that keen on wants to play, <laughs> for, play in England at this moment in time. So uh, we'll get to that in, 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 in a little while. The problem with that as well is, you know, that you're rehousing someone from the other side of the world. There's, there's a bedding in period. It's the, the best time to take your players from Australia is the start of the year when they've got a pre-season to get used to it. Even though it's normally snowy and whatever, we've got some decent weather over here. Exactly. It's, it's a big, big financial investment into a player. So it's not just financial, it's, 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 it's psychological, it's yeah, mental, absolutely. all that sort of stuff. And I'll say two words to you, Jane Fairbank and others who are in that. Ready? Matt, Matt Place. Place. Yeah. Oh, I thought <laughs> we were going to synchronise that then. Shocking. <laughs> the Place, Matt. Anyway, um, yeah, it's the, 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 whatever happened, it is a very, very exciting time. We've got, we've got a, a team on the pitch that, fair enough, it was a, a, a clunky display shall we say, it was rusty. It's, it's it, two games which have kind of, uh, it could be watershed moments in terms of our season. Whitehaven, before the break, where by Grix's admission, we looked a little bit leggy, looked a little bit tired because of the effort that we've put in in those previous games. And then today, where we looked a little bit rusty because we had the week off and stuff. Both games where in times gone by, we'd have probably lost going forward uh, lost those games we've won those games now we're on seven in a row and we 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 are looking good and it all ties up so nicely for that Bradford game again which is the most important game of the season normally but it's so yeah. more important because of the buffer that we can give ourselves from third down absolutely i'd see your point about sort of like turning points in our season and we've seen a lot of it since then as well for me it was battle away yeah. when again we were sort of teetering on the edge of oh we could lose this game in previous years and then we found a way to win that seemed to be the case against Whitehaven against Sheffield today in, in loads of our previous games so that was when it started for me I'll ask quite a con controversial question regarding that do you think that battle game was the start of Liam Harris being 
the match winner for Halifax. Now, he's not necessarily had a bad season until then, uh, but that was the game I feel that he got his mojo and thought, right, I can grasp a game and take it over yeah. and win it. Because look at that, you know, the try that he scored to seal the... the, 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 the well, he scored an hat trick that day, didn't he? Yeah. He scored an hat trick. So he grabbed the game and made it. It is. In the week after against Widnes, clutch moment, he stepped up and dropped the goal. Today, he had two moments where he went on the, he went on the blind side, kicked it against a Sheffield man to play into to, uh, yeah, touch. To and then obvious, set, and yeah. obviously, he's chipped and scored the, the, the match ceiling try for that. Do you think that was the game where he's he started to get his mojo and looking like the Super League player that we signed? Uh, to be honest, I thought he really started early on in the year because I think he has had a good season so yeah. far. Oh, yeah, against, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. Oh, yeah, I'm not knocking that. that at all. Uh, but. I think against Bradford, he, he really showed sort of glimpses of that he could take the game by the scruff of the neck. But what he had alongside him was Robinson and then he's obviously had Grix alongside him. He hasn't yeah. needed to do everything. And I think I think he might have been challenged a bit by Grix to say, look, come on now, you're the you're the star of this team. You need to go out there and do yeah. it. And he, and he has. So you can see he's he's playing a lot more first receiver. You know, he's going out there, he's running across the line, he's picking the passes rather than sort of letting Grixie or Connor do it and then going, right, I'll play off the back of what they put on their yeah, side. Yeah. So um Yes and no about your question. I didn't think it was that controversial either, to be honest oh, with you. I think, you're, I think you're quite mild in your old age. You know, <laughs> um, Touche. Right. Uh, one thing that that is controversial, Anthony Hildred. Uh, we'll leave the uh, the comment about China. <laughs> uh, it's a bell. Uh, if you stick 100 grand into a genetic breeding in China, we could have a little... Little hands made up for 2014. Well, nothing in that what these Germans did back in the back in the day for, for the Olympics. So anyway, but his next comment is is really really that's a belter. See, I I, I cannot wait to see Robinson and Grix. I know Harris is doing bits at the moment. But I believe it, but right to see it happen. Con Robinson was named in the in the squad for today. He's, he was warming up with the guys there. What do you reckon for the Bradford game? Do you stick with Grix and Harris? Do you because one thing that we are short of is a really good kicking game. Yeah, we 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 struggle to find our way out with a decent kicking game, and Robinson gives us that. Um, Grix can do, but he's, he's, he's not done the last couple of weeks. And Harris, his main strength is running game or his short kicking game close to the line. Robinson. It's 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 it's, it's going to be tough, isn't it? I think the game that those two had against Bradford in the first game at Dewsbury, when arguably they had a better side than they might be putting out on Sunday, should show that those two together are a, an outstanding pairing, and they just yeah. sort of got the mojo back. I spoke to Connor today; he's hopeful that he'll play next week. But it's it's one of those one thing that we don't have with those two together is the experience of grit. Yeah, and in a big game like that with a big crowd, when it starts to, I think there was a game. Um, I don't know if it was 2018 or 19 where we sort of got ahead of them and we didn't have that experience and then I think Woody threw an inside ball. 2019, it was Good Friday. Yep. Good Friday. Yep. So you need someone like that. So what, what do you do with Grix? If you put those two back together, so you have a good kicking game, a good running game, what do you do with Grix? Do you put him back to full back? No, as we've established, yeah. we think that Wood Burnall's having probably the season of his career. He's, he's the player the of the year for you. Know. So I, I totally agree with that. So... Th these are the these. This is why Grixie gets paid the big bucks. And as we've spoke for all through the stream, he's making these brave decisions. But is he brave enough to change a winning team like that for someone that hasn't played for eight weeks, maybe longer, ten weeks? Break up what they've got. Yeah. I would like to see him play together because I think now is the time where you want to get them playing together for the rest of the year yes. and, and get get it firing yeah. again because it really did start to fire. <clears throat> I mean, there was there were times earlier in the year where those two were basically winning games without anyone laying a hand on them because yeah. they just they, they had the spacing right, everyone were running the right lines. So it's a tough decision. And to be honest with you, Mike, I don't really have an answer. I've got an answer. I think Griggs will play because he, he experience in those games, he hit the nail on the head about that Good Friday game. But also the games that we've won against Bradford, the two massive games, the Summer Bash and the quarterfinal, Griggs played half back yeah. those that day. And he's a, he was a good foil on, 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 those, on those days for his half back partner. 
if we get it right, Liam Harris can do his running game and let Griggs do the organising, and I think it will work so much better uh, for that. Uh, I, I love Conor Robinson as a player, and and, and, I, and I, I completely agree with you. I think he needs to be introduced back into the into the, the fall because they're the future. They're, they're Robinson and Harris, provided we are able to keep both of them, they are the future six and seven of Halifax. Yeah. Scott Griggs has done a, a brilliant job deputising while Conor Robinson has been injured, and <coughs> he will have a big part to play in the rest of the season but I think going forward we need to put Robinson and Harris together. Right well what about a controversial comment from me then what about playing Robinson at hooker we know he can do it it's where he started his career. Yeah yeah again but who, who would you lose would you put more at loose forward all game and have Burrow coming off the bench and, and spelling? I don't know if Burrow will be back by then you mean Davis? No, I think, but, but I mean Borough. I'm sure he is he'll, he's he'll back for, for Bradford game. I think I think the only reason he weren't playing today was because we weren't named in Wigan's squad. I thought he got in, someone said he got injured playing for Wigan. Did so. he? Right, I, I don't we're know. With the fountains of all information here, we're like, oh, did he? I don't Please know, let us know. Maybe. I think we've got another microphone in here because Stephen Boyer has, has has come and said, "Come on, on bench go. next week. So come on, as okay." But again, it's where do you put Amir Borough? People are saying Amir Borough's been brilliant. Want to play years? It, it's we've got a little bit of an embarrassment of riches there at the moment um, Anthony Hildred said a few little sharp balls to the props get players back in and we'll rip Bradford a new um, ah, yes, say yes, it. yes a new donkey um, <laughs> um, yeah um, and he also said Super Super League hands and knowledge has basically set a platform to win we can play the ball in the middle of the park um, yeah I totally agree yeah, a again, I, I would definitely play Scott Griggs next week because the experience and the game management that he provides in those moments. That Battler game where, where Liam Harris played so well, Scott Griggs came up with a couple of really good yeah. good moments to set the platform for that, and it, it needs that old head um, to run things there. Griggs and Woodburn all seem to have a really good understanding, a, yeah. bit, a bit like Robinson and Harris did. If there was a way where we could sort of work out four of them playing, but... yeah. So it, thought, it could be too many cooks spoiling the broth yeah, possibly in that, in that respect there but what do you guys reckon there's obviously Stephen Boyer said that Conor Robinson should come back come on as okay but again it, it, are we fitting him in he's, 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 he's done his bit and like when we signed him he wants to be the, the, the Halifax scrum half he wants to be Halifax half back and then we're going to move into Wooker like he's, he, it's Shades 2015 yeah. again trying to fit him into a side when he's, he's proved that he's a brilliant half back at York uh, is, is that going to is that going to derail the lad really he's, he's, he's fascinating let us know what, what you guys think if, if, if you maybe that could be the theme for the rest of the, the podcast for people to, 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 to think about who would your halfback pairing be next week get, get, given that uh, Robinson is fit to play another conundrum that, 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 that is there is the, the return to, to the team of Ed Barber yeah. now Ed Barber arguably one of the, the best players of, of, of the start of the season running in tries for fun at centre. Um, but then, like you say, Zach McCombs come in and, plays, and he's done fantastic. I rate Zach McCombs so highly. It is, they're going to come back to it, keep coming back to it. It's the Greg Worthington issue where defensively, he's brilliant, so solid, but he's offering very, very little in attack while we signed him. Fair enough, he, he, he does make yards, he makes metres after contact and, and that sort of thing, but he, he doesn't look like scoring a try. And, we need We've been offer. saying for months he's not scoring until he gets a hat trick against Bradford. Yeah, well, maybe that's so. the, that's the point I was leading up to. That's what I was running up for. Is is next Sunday the prophecy where people are saying he's going to score the last minute winner? He's going to be another Halifax number three running away to score a winning try against Bradford. I reckon it's going to happen. I it, it must happen this week. It must happen. It's the makeup of this side as well as Grixie's. Been, we've been saying that he's been making the right choices and that sort of thing. It's, um, you know, do you change a winning team one? If someone's playing well, you can't drop them just for a bigger name because, yeah. because they've proven that they can do it on the field. So I, get, I, I don't know. I bet he's going to have an absolute, a few sleepless nights this week. And Which is what we all want, isn't it? I think training will be absolutely bouncing this week because yeah. everyone wants to play in a game like that, especially yeah. the, the first big one back with a big crowd in, and it will be bouncing. And they're all local lads who want to play. Exactly. Worthing, Worthington, Barber, McComb, Griggs. They're all local lads. They all want to play. They do not want to have the double done over and by their no. hated rivals. No, so. because we should have won that game yeah. or at least taken a point out of that game before. And again... 
ma- massive numbers down the share, hopefully. Yorkshire Day, no restrictions. Place will be bouncing. They want to do the job there. Um, Jane Fairbank said Kitty, she wants the status quo there. Keep Grixon, would burn all in position. They've played well in these positions. Yep, I, I, I completely agree. Would burn all is probably the undroppable player at yeah. the moment. You, you just cannot, he's not had a bad game at all and he just looks so threatening and that that um that chase back today just proves how much he's improved because I don't think the James will burn all of twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. I don't think he's chasing even, back. Even this year I think he's had he's had to chase back a few times. I, I think um I'm trying to think which game it was. But he had to chase back and he didn't quite make it. Yeah. So I, I have to admit I've sort of feared the worst and obviously it just didn't the level inevitable because they went to the other end and scored. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's been outstanding, I think, as well, under the high ball. If you put Grixie back to full back, that sort of means that you're asking questions yeah. about that again. Woody's, he just seems to have nailed that position down. He's said for years that that was his position. Yeah. And, and, I, and, 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 and I've said before, I've said he's, he's, he's best as a fullback, really, but it is, he's, he's definitely proved it, and I can't see him being dropped, really. Um, Jane Fairbank has also said uh, Wernton's been good, great yards and defence. Yeah, completely yeah. agree. Completely get, agree there, Jane, definitely. He's, he's so solid in defence, and he does make really good yards. He just needs to threaten the trial line, at least threaten the trial line. Even better score, but he's, he's, he's been solid, and that sort of thing. Our, our defence... Bar today, but again, I think I think today is a bit of a blip. Has been really solid regardless. He needs he needs to show more in attack, really. Um, but again, we don't know what happens in training. Maybe he does that, and it, again, it's the shape of that sort of thing for to go left to go right and all that sort of jazz. Um, Anthony Hildred is incredibly excited <laughs> for, for 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 this game. Half past ten at, at, at Weather Spoons. It's gonna feel like Bolton, but at home, blind me. <laughs> Who wants to know about Bolton there? Uh, yes, and Grixy Grix has got a headache to sort for Bradford, definitely, definitely. That's it. Again, that that is, but that's what we want. We want competition for places. We want, and and I'm so sure Simon Grix is licking his lips to and rubbing his hands about doing it. Yeah, and again, it's it's what you want as a coach. You want those options. You don't want the team to be default. You want to be able to, to make those sort of decisions there. That's where we've always fallen down, isn't it? When when the team has picked itself. So um, I, I really like the timing of all this as well. That you know, because obviously we were mentioned that article coming out, and he was saying that he's sort of learning to sort of live as a coach. He seems to be really hitting his straps when it comes to his man management and everything else. So. I'd I'd like to hear from those guys that wanted Grixie out when me and oh, you were. Oh, you are you starting on this one then? Yes. When me and you were sat here taking all that flack after Oldham game, we were saying, "Don't worry, it'll all come good." We are going to be smug if we beat Bradford next week. We are going to be smug. Yes, um, I seem to think that there were cert- certain people um, who, who, who on this podcast who who was who was slagging Grix off via private message and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that our, our inbox is open, and uh, yes, uh, we, we 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 remember the, these these things. If we get promoted, you're all getting named and shamed. Put yes, it that way. Exactly. Uh, re- repent your sins now, <laughs> shall we say? Uh, but no, uh, again, the cream always rises to the top. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. And Anthony Hildred has, has admitted um, that 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 he he was one of those. Um, that, 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 that criticised Grix. Again, there's nothing wrong with criticism at all. That, 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 that's that's what they're, but saying that a coach wasn't good enough and all that sort of stuff, it was just completely wrong. Especially as he's now proven it. Hindsight exactly. is twenty twenty vision. Ha- yes, exactly. We'll move on. All we need to know is are you behind him now? Because if Definitely. you're not, then you need your head examining. Definitely, yeah. Um, yes, and uh, until again, saying uh, that the, the, the best turn um, the, over those People from Bradford. Uh, <laughs> power is, phrase. Yeah. Let's paraphrase a little bit. It's the family show and all that. Uh, Pete Wood again. At the end of the day, we have a good squad. When a player is a player, so rested or injured, we're not dropping in quality with, with whoever plays. Brilliant point. Absolutely brilliant. Again, the way that Curtis Davis, and again, this is turning, well, it's not turning, so it's already been the unofficial Davis Twins uh, oh, yeah. uh, fan, fan club. Um, the fact that he's hardly played any rugby in the last 12 months and done the job that he's done since he's come in. Yeah, he's not played that much minutes, but again, it takes a long while to, to get that match fitness there. I think he's done remarkably well. And again, he, he, he's, he's been brilliant there. Um, Jane Fairbank. Um, yep, yeah, all, all, all the Greeks mourners got me so cross. Yep. Yeah. 
completely agree. <laughs> Again, it's one of those where he was kind of, he got forced, well, not forced in position, but he got put into the position a lot earlier than anticipated. Um, he's, he's had COVID to deal with all that sort of stuff. This was the year to for, for him where he'd be judged, and I think he was judged too harshly too early because you got to bed in. And like it's coming on to roost now because the players couldn't socialise with each other. They couldn't get they couldn't get those combinations because the combinations happen on a rugby field, not just on the training pitch and on the game. They happen when you actually speak to them right out out of the game, having a coffee, having a pint or whatever. Yeah. You get to know the people there, and if you don't if you don't get on or or trust the person that you're you're with on the pitch, you're not going to bust a gut for them really. It's, exactly. it's all it's all those little one percenters, band of brothers in the trenches sort of stuff. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. Right. Well, uh, just just before we come to the final sort of 10 15 minutes if there's anything out there you want to talk about get your comments in now and we'll address all the questions that you have and everything but um should we should we address the bad news rugby league story yes we'll go a bit more because this is go on mike use your catchphrase what what it's a halifax podcast <laughs> oh yes so yes so, so yeah, yeah. This, this is a rugby league podcast with just a hint of uh of uh, Halifax, uh, Halifax Panthers, yeah, uh, and yeah, this this week saw the uh, announcement that the, uh, the, holders. The, 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 the the holders, the 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 bastions of our great sport, um, Australia and New Zealand, wouldn't be travelling for the for the Rugby League World Cup um, in November, even though they sent the, the second highest number of athletes to Olympics in their history. Uh, cricketers are going touring in Bangladesh, and they're also sending a rugby union team over in in, in the autumn. They don't want to come over and play rugby league because of safety issues. Now, I just think that is complete and utter horse crap. It is. It stinks of greed, arrogance, and wanting to d- dictate the game like they're trying to do with the rules and and, and the timetable of, of rugby league for, for years now. Um, I think, the, and as I said before, I think the World Cup should carry on. Leave, leave them there. Like, I, I know it's going to be a rugby league World Cup with an, an asterisk, but let them let them leave the party. Let let them sit and stew there. Is it though? No one's forcing them to come over. Obviously, no. And it's it's their choice. And if 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 that is genuinely their what their issue is, I think I believe there's been lots of work in the background to prove that everything's going to be very very safe, like the Euros was and that sort of thing. Um, and and again, it's 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 five months down the line. It's four months down the line, and obviously. Things are progressing in terms of the the, the 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 rates going up and the amount of cases are going up, but vaccines are being done and all that sort of jazz. It's it's going to be very very safe, I, in in my opinion. I just think he thinks of absolute greed and that it's not the players' fault, but I think the the he needs strong leadership now so yeah. that if it is a case of player welfare where they've not they've not let them they don't want to travel up, then the players shouldn't change the mind and go actually i've got italian heritage i've got this heritage they should well they no. polled the players and i think didn't they say at least 85 90 percent of them said that they wanted to play so yep. they've not even consulted the players they've and again said, look the, the federation says that we're, we're not sending a team and that's that which is yeah it just smacks of protecting the domestic competition at the detriment of the entire international game it's not just about them there's all these Emerging nations that are coming Definitely. over that would love to have a chance that them playing against Australia, they go back to their home country and tell we played against the mighty kangaroos, the NRL stars that they watch on TV. You grow the game. Yeah. They don't seem to want to grow the game. Rugby league is far bigger than the NRL. It'd be, it'd be like in football if Premier League decided, no, we're not letting well, any of our players play internationally. Imagine the fall. Someone, like someone had a really good point that I read on social media somewhere. They said, when it, Italy, who have obviously won the World Cup a few times and they beat us in the Euros and that, didn't qualify for one of the tournaments, did they turn around and, oh, we can't play it without it? Italy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and obviously rugby league is an infinitely smaller sport than soccer or whatever, but it's the same principle. Yeah, I don't think if the World Cup was in Australia that we'd go. Oh, we're not travelling over there. It, it, it's just smacks of absolute arrogance and wanting to dictate the whole sport, and it is wrong. It is absolutely wrong. Yes, the governance of the rugby league game as a whole in the last 10, 15 years has been nothing short of embarrassing. Um, but it's not... And again, COVID is no one's fault and it's it's completely a unique set of circumstances. But we have got an opportunity to be the first... Look at the Olympics now. Yeah. They're getting them going now, but it's in front of no crowds whatsoever. There's no one there. The Lions tour at the moment, fantastic result for Lions, by the way, but no one there. 
we <laughs> you stick to your NFL, mate. Oh, really? uh, <laughs> but this is the World Cup is the first true event where there's going to be complete unrestricted crowds showcasing not just the, the, the men's rugby game, the women's game and the wheelchair yeah. game where it, the, there'd been so much time and money and effort put into it for the NRL and to, to say, no, we're not sending it because of player welfare and that. It's just, it's, it's, my, my, I think Mark aston has been, uh, <laughs> been, been, been in the year of Peter Blandis. I, I do sort of see the point because they had to go straight from one bubble to another for a season, but what's the, what's the damage of, of having their season start two weeks later? They, they stopped it for six weeks or whatever it was last year, you know. So and, and and they've got no issue when State of Origin's on backing up into the weekend. Exactly it, it, so. it's, it's on it. It's, I, I was fuming. When it came out, I was absolutely fuming. And I'm still it's very, disrespectful, very disrespectful. And it's one of those, should we be looking at sanctions for them now for the next international tournaments? Yeah. Again, it's the, 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 the game of rugby league is far bigger than the NRL, yes, it's the it's the it's the most popular league in the world, and it's 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 the standard setter and all that malarkey. But it is not the be all and end all of rugby league, and 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 we, and the, we need strong leadership more than ever to to to, to, to go from that. And hopefully, if if what you're right in saying in terms of the players wanting to play, they need to grow a pair and actually challenge it and say, look, we want to play in the World Cup. Yes, it's it's fairly obvious that Australia may well win it again, but that sport. Yeah. Look how many times Man United won the Premier League in the nineties and that. Did other teams take the bat and ball home and go, Oh no, we're not playing because of the team there who win it all? No. That's the whole it's 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 ugh. so question to everyone watching then, should the rugby league World Cup continue without Australia and New Zealand taking part? But the the, the thing I will say to temper it is that it's gonna be quite ca- it's gonna be quite it depends how many teams follow suit now at the moment it's only australia and new zealand but the big big percentage of south sea islanders yeah. um or polynesians um get their players from the nrl competition and if yeah. they follow suit then that's where it'll go beyond repair and that's where you can't have a world cup at the moment if it's just australia and new zealand then fine let do it regardless. Let's have it. Let's have a party. They're not invited. They can sit and sulk on the other side of the world, and they're missing out on a brilliant, brilliant event. If it takes out Tonga, Fiji, yeah. Samoa, Papua, um, New Papua New Guinea, then that's where we're going to have serious issues. So hopefully, as I said before, the players at, pull ranks. They get get um, mobilised and say to them, "Hang on, we want to play. You've not you've not consulted us. We want to play." And if we're not going to play as a, a sanctioning uh, Australia team or a, a, a New Zealand team, then do what Tonga did when Tonga played. Well, didn't, weren't they the president's? Yeah, president's uh, 13. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Do it that way. He's a, a rebels. A rebel Anyone who saw those fantastic Tonga versus Samoa games or whatever they were. Oh, the World Cup the semi final, Tonga v England. Absolutely. Why would you not game. want to see more international rugby league? It's the easiest way to sell the sport to a wider audience who who aren't parochial about the clubs or any of that. Surely sort of thing. it's just win win. Fair enough, it's happening at, on our shores, but surely you get more people in Australia, New Zealand, all the or, or all the people in the teams in the Southern Hemisphere. They will get invested in it as well. And obviously, you've got the wheelchair where there's teams like Brazil playing, yeah. and Norway, and all these I mean, other things. We went to watch um, Jamaica play against the England Knights, didn't we? Yeah. Unbelievable experience with the bands playing and everything. It's, it's a totally different world out there, and we should be embracing it. Let's get to the comments then yeah. before we finish on a positive note. Yes. Positive. Um, yep. Jane, Jane Fairbank said, thinking it's the NRL dictating. Yep. Uh, Jim A. Sutcliffe, utterly pointless. Now, uh, expand on that if you could, Jim. What's utterly pointless? Pointless is, is is it utterly pointless holding the World Cup without Australia and New Zealand, or is it utterly pointless the the uh, the, the news from the NRL saying it's player welfare? Just expand on that if you if you can. Um, yeah, Jane Fairbanks said it's it should take uh, place. Lyndon Grady agrees, uh, and he said it agrees that the rugby world doesn't revolve around the Aussies and New Zealand. Yep, yeah, absolutely fine. And the Hilda Street in there, though rugby league is an M sixty two car park. <laughs> It it, it it is in some respects that's what dominates it you could say that London dominate football and that sort of thing and and, and, and all that malarkey and, and it's just southern for, for, for cricket we don't know but it is much more than an M62 car park 
it is it, the, the game in terms of participation of the sport it is everywhere rugby league is everywhere it's just that at the top level yes in this country it is an m62 corridor sport but it, papua new guinea it's still the national sport yeah. Rugby mad in Samoa and Tonga and Fiji. The Amer- I don't know if you follow the Americans, the Cleveland guys or whatever. They yes. want to hear about it. They're absolutely loving it and they're educating young lads about the game and it's fantastic to see. Yeah, so. I saw an article about um, a, a, a derby in California. I think it's Sacramento in some, somewhere else. <laughs> Who would have ever thought? And yeah, the standard might not be good, but the standard worked good when they started in here, there and everywhere. You and know, again, sure, so. I, I will come back to my original broken record, Toronto. They they absolutely love rugby league over there, and they, and by all by all accounts, they are still watching rugby league. They're still wanting to get involved and stuff like that. If you give them the product, people love it. Yeah. And the best way to give people a product is by having a World Cup to showcase all the different nations, all the different culture. It ties in very well with what's going on in terms of um, respect and non discrimination. After and the Olympics sort of as well, when everyone's been used to watching nations against nations in the yeah. Olympics, you give them a big event like that. And and also, if you if you delay it by another year, then it, it, yeah. it, it you will compete with a football World Cup. Uh, we'll compete. I think Winter a, Olympics. I think there's an Asha series yeah. coming up as well in terms of cricket. It's just it now is our time. It is that time there. And Jane Fairbank disagree. I love it. There's people in the comments disagreeing with each other. This is what it's all about. Uh, it's disagreeing that uh, rugby league is worldwide, not an M62 car park. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Just yeah. We'll finish up. Right, I'm speaking, speaking of World Cup finals, because the World Cup of Rugby League in Halifax <laughs> is coming up this Sunday. Yes. Halifax versus Bradford at the Shea this Sunday. Yes. I cannot wait. Yes, definitely. It is, it's what we've been waiting for for the past 18 months. Sheffield's all well and good and playing them or whatever at Wakefield, even though it's a dump. But back at the Shea with, with both sets of fans in, rocking the place. Yeah, absolute atmosphere. Bradford will play their part and... It's a it's a it's a controversial line, but I can't wait to see loads and loads of Bradford fans come over on that side. Them singing their hearts out, us singing their hearts out. A brilliant game of rugby, and the Panthers and being Panthers win. Yeah. Panthers win. The, the the stuff that's going on in the game before get down there nice and early. Um, get get bring your family down, bring, bring your friends. You can pay cash on the gate for all you morning yeah, people, everyone. all you morning people who say oh, I'm not going to a game until I can walk up. There you go, walk up. Bring your friends, bring your family, tell everyone, spread the word. It is going to be an absolute corker and will be there. I can't wait. The live stream next week may well be um, sponsored by Jatemans because I will need it. I have to sing and twist and shout all, all that time. But yeah, cannot, cannot wait. Um, yes, we'll, we'll leave it there, and that, that one there. Uh, thanks again, Rick. Cheers, for, mate. For, for that. Thanks to everyone for watching and the comments there. Thanks to Eclipse and Delivery. Uh, Delivery! As, <laughs> as always. Um, but yes, thank you so much. I've been Mike Egg, he's been Rick Farrell, and last but not least, up the Panthers! Up the Panthers! Seven in a row, baby! Seven in a row. Let's make it eight. Go on, Jay, get your face painted. <laughs>